All right, getting ready for my trip. My ride's gonna be here in a few minutes to pick me up. Right now, here it is. I moved back to Nebraska 11 years ago to the family farm, and I really love what I do and where I live, but it occurred to me that since I've been back, I still have not left the state, and it's been 11 years. That's about to change. was so incredibly nervous I just could not relax. There I am, that's me, set at the Omaha airport, getting ready to go. It took a little while, I finally did eventually calm down, but it was about halfway to Seattle before I could just sit back and relax and look out the window and enjoy. Okay, here's the status. I made it to Seattle, and um, my next flight doesn't leave until 2.10 in the morning, or I think we can load at 1.30, but it's 4.02 right now in the afternoon, and the check-in desk isn't even showing up. There's no one around. Everything's occupied by other airports or other airlines, so I can't get rid of this bag until four hours before we leave which is like at 10 o'clock obviously which is also six hours from now and the crappy part is there's nowhere to sit on this side there's nowhere to be and there's no really no food there's a Starbucks I guess I had some coffee and then like a competitor coffee place and that's pretty much it so I guess I'm going to sit here and enjoy the sights of the airport because I'm not taking all of this crap downtown Seattle. Two backpacks and a rolling luggage. It seems like a pain, more of a pain than it's worth. So, I, <coughs> excuse me. So I guess I'll just be uh, sitting here and uh, so if you need me, I'm right here by this glass panel. So, yeah. I guess there is kind of a positive thing. I ordered a uh, a wrap for the flight and it was supposed to be like a chicken shawarma thing and I was expecting it honestly to look like a microwave burrito out of the convenience store but it was actually really good it was like kind of thick bread about that thick with um, arugula sweet potatoes chicken and uh, well, what else was in there I don't really remember it was actually really good and I was pleasantly surprised for 10.50 you know, it's an airline, but it was good. I kind of wish I had more of it, to be quite honest, which I was not expecting at all, because I expected it to taste like a microwave burrito. Well, as you can probably tell, it's getting darker in here. <laughs> I don't even know what time it is, but uh, this is really kind of boring. I did go get a cheeseburger that was done in 7.52. Got uh, two more hours before I can check my bag. I did go get a cheeseburger that was uh, very underwhelming and cost like 13 bucks or 14 bucks or something. Finally made it to our gate here in Seattle to go to Taiwan and we have an hour and a half to kill and all the restaurants are of course closed. I'm gonna go see if this uh, news stand up here has some food. They had something earlier but I don't know, probably not much. I feel like I'm walking like 40 miles an hour. So if you ever wondered what clouds and clunkers look like, these are the clunkers. Those are the clouds. There you go, now you know. Absolutely starving. So I got a chicken Caesar wrap, um, a Coke, and a bottle of water, 20 bucks. Good thing food in Bangkok is cheap. So by the time I got on the plane, I had been planning this trip for nine months and I had chosen a G-Adventures trip for a couple of reasons. One, I'm a solo traveler. 
to, I don't know any of the languages where I'm going or what to see. And three, it seemed like the best combination of touristy and adventure. And I didn't really think I would ever probably be able to do this again. And I didn't want to regret it. Spoiler alert, I didn't regret it one bit. About two weeks before I left, I got an email from EVA Airlines asking me if I wanted to bid on a higher class seat. I didn't really know what that entailed, so I looked online and I decided to bid $5 over the minimum bid, which was $75 or something. So I bid 80 and I got it. And I got, actually, instead of having the three of us jam shoulder to shoulder, there was just me and one person sitting to my left. And I had two full windows to look out. I got a bigger tray, I got pink dishes instead of green dishes, and I just a side note, why do they give you all of these little dishes? You have a tray that's literally like one square foot and they give you like nine dishes and crispy balls. I still don't know what those are. All right, made it through immigration, got the passport stamps now. We gotta see if we can find the luggage. But I am hot. I am absolutely exhausted. I think we might be on 37 hours of travel. All right, got out of that mess. Baggage looks good, and we got some bot. So I think we're about set. Now we just gotta go figure out how to operate the train thing here. Actually not operate it, they're gonna operate it. I'm just gonna get on it. Here's some pretty good, uh, Escalators they don't work very well if you got a rolly. We'll just take your bag right away from you. This place is really pretty easy, but uh, with all the different characters and different languages and stuff, it's you kind of psych yourself out. You're going in the right spot, but you think you might not be because you've seen so many signs you don't understand. I have no idea if I'm doing this right. I got a token and that let me in. Now I can go get on the train out of the airport. Oh, we're going to A6. I think this is right. Apparently they do a security check every time. So we're getting off at Makassan, then we have to go underneath and get on... I can't remember what, the blue line. And that goes to Wat Mangon or something like that. Mangon. Mangon. We'll get there. So if you're ever doing this trip to Bangkok, I highly recommend taking the train out of the airport rather than taking a taxi or something like that. Way, way cheaper and pretty efficient, pretty easy to navigate, unless you're dragging a bunch of people with your serious amounts of luggage or something, maybe one or two people, maybe a small kid. It seems so much easier to just use the train. is amazing it's like a mixture of gunpowder diesel exhaust millions of human beings and um, sulfur 
Oh, fried food. I don't know. It's pretty crazy. I was gonna try and go up. Well, that was some craziness, but uh, apparently security officer over here told me that this is where we need to go. So, we're on stop 21 now of this train, which is separate from that other train. And we're going to stop 29, so it should be quick. I'm not really sure why that thing started beeping like that. I think maybe I thought I was sneaking someone through or something because of my suitcase. We're in here. Street level. Almost there. We got like a block and a half to walk. I think they're kind of short blocks. But hopefully this is an indicator of how hot it is outside because it's pretty steamy in here. I mean, yeah, it's pretty warm obviously, but it's pretty uh, oven in here right now. should be right around the left here, like immediately. Wow, I'm on the 14th floor, I think that's close, right, on, right near the roof, I think. It's, I just remember no no smoking and no durian because you'll get fined. You can't have those in the hotel. No one likes the durians. Now I've worked in hotels That's over the nice. years and it's been a while as you can tell because I could not figure out how the key card worked for some reason. <laughs> what an idiot. Well, nice. All right. Oops. Shut the door. All right. Well, that was crazy. Let's take a look at the old timer here and see where we're at. So from the minute I left the house to right now, oh my God. 40 hours, 42 minutes and 37 seconds. And so that was one car, six airplanes, a train, a light rail train and a subway and my feet. All right, that being said, um, I don't know if I'm gonna end this vlog now or what. It's been a long time to get here and I'm really, really tired, hungry, hot sweaty, stinky, and I, uh, I think I might need to take a little break here, but um, maybe see you a little bit later. I'm gonna hit the shower first. So after the shower and a quick beer on the rooftop, I decided to hit the streets and just see what it looks like. And it was absolute chaos, to be quite honest. Organized chaos, of course, but it was really cool to see. I wasn't out terribly long before I actually got caught in a downpour and it kind of reminded me of, of something out of Blade Runner. And so I decided to give it a little bit of an eerie feel, maybe a sci-fi feel, maybe, if you will.
since my body clock decided to wake me up at three o'clock in the morning because that would have been three o'clock in the afternoon back home I decided to go for a walk and that was uh, pretty interesting lots of rats running around and lots of feral dog packs there was a couple dog packs that would be these here the black and white ones there's like actually five of them and this one crippled guy here that every the other dogs watched out for and then there was another one that was all brown dogs that looked like they were all related or something too but um, I had to snap a picture of him. He had to take a break, so the other guy actually waited for him to rest before they took off again. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know how many more videos I will have of this trip, but it was a trip of a lifetime, and I really enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to do the thing with the buttons down below.